actually <laughs> did. But um, they lied about entrepreneurship will be candid conversations with business owners that are successful, but have, you know, experienced some things along their journey. So that's what um, they lied about entrepreneurship is all about. So welcome, Shana Co. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Meek. Thank you so much for having me. Like, it's an honor to be Yes. We gonna kick it off. Kick it off. Okay? I was like, I gotta have Shauna first. <laughs> we... Thank you so much for having me. Like, pretty dope. Yes. Continue doing what you do, by the way. Thank you. Changing the game. For real, for real. And I'm changing some things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So... Um, first, I want you to tell us who you are and what it is that you do. Okay, so my name is Shauna Cole. I am a serial entrepreneur. I'm an author. I'm a mom. Um, a go-getter. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get it in whatever situation. I have a clothing boutique, makeup line. I'm a makeup artist. I do coaching. Um, I do Airbnb. Uh, I do tarot. Like, whatever it is that's going to get me to the bag, that's what I do. I just do it all, okay? okay? Yeah. Okay. So tell us who Shauna was before being an entrepreneur, before prison, before being a parent, all that stuff. Okay. This place. <laughs> okay. So um, I grew up pretty unstable, Meek, and um, grew up in Kingston, Jamaica. So I was born there, and. My mom and my dad, like I was between homes, between my mom and my dad here with my grandmother in New Jersey. And I just couldn't find my place. And I, I think that had a lot to do with my journey, being unstable. So at the age of 14, I got kicked out of high school. That was in, um, we call it second form in Jamaica, eighth grade. So I got kicked out of high school and then it, the streets taught me everything that I know right now. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. So um, what made you want to be an entrepreneur? Is, was it that street life? That <laughs> if, I mean, I yeah. was an entrepreneur at 14 if I had to go and figure out, right. you know, um, my dad though, he used to buy and sell stuff. My mom also. So I grew up seeing the hustle. Okay. Um, and then at 14, when I had to figure it out on my own, you know, my dad that gave up on me at 14, so he left and he was the provider. Okay. So I was living with my mom and I'm like, you know, how do I survive off nothing? And one day I was looking in the newspaper and I see where they said masseuse needed. Okay. And at 14, I became a masseuse. Okay. In Jamaica. Uh, in Jamaica. Okay. okay. So for me, that was me, you know, being an entrepreneur, like having to figure it out and just doing what I do to survive. Okay. And um, that was an experience, but no regrets. So it okay. started from there. And then after that, I came to America, came back to America to live when I was about 17. Okay. Came back, lived with my grandmother. Hated that because I don't like people telling me what to do. I'm very. You thought she was grown already. Period. I was already grown. I was making mad cake, right? Yeah. So I was making my own money, living on my own, doing my own thing. So to come here, my grandmother telling me, "Oh, you have to go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You cannot come in my house." And I'm like, "Bro, no way." So I just took on the road again. Okay. <laughs> and um, came here though. I tried to go back to school because I. Do, do not have my GED. Okay. Um, went to some adult school, stopped that, worked at Forever 21 as a visual merchandiser for some time, and then I just came to New York and it started there. Like, the moment I came to New York, the moment I went to New York, it was, I just got in every trouble that you could think of. Okay. 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 So, um, what let's see so how did how did you going to like being on the run having a baby being a fugitive going to jamaica coming back to the states and going to do time like how do you think that affected you um okay so i had my son before i went on the run um he was actually eight months when i caught that last case 
and I already had two felonies from New York. Okay. So I did time in Rikers. I did a year in Rikers before my son okay. was born. Okay. So I already had that in and in New York it's mandatory for you to do state time after your third felony. Like okay. mandatory. So one day told me that I had to do state time, I'm like I have a young baby. Like how do I leave this child for three to five years? Right. That doesn't know me yet. Right. So I'm like, nope. <laughs> and a light bulb went off, girl. <laughs> and I left the courthouse and I said, I'm going to Jamaica. I'm not going to prison for three to five years. I promise you. I'm not. You didn't get to the airport and like freeze up, like, no. what if they come girl, get you? I was out. Okay. Damn. But no, so I went home and I was going back and forth to court about three times before I left. Okay. So I needed that time to, you know, buy stuff, send down, pack up my apartment, okay. get get my okay. affairs, okay. you know, get my stuff okay. together. Okay. And after my last court date, I left about three days after. Okay. I was nervous going down because I'm like, um, what if they say she has an open case, she can't leave? But I got out smoothly. And um, when I got to, I took my son with me. Mm -hmm. So we lived in Jamaica. We stayed eight years in Jamaica. Wow. And um, I went to Jamaica when broke as a joke, me like so broke. And I call my friend. I'm like, I'm so broke, bro. Like, what do I do at this point? And he's like, I can sell you, some, sell, send you some makeup. Right. And I'm like, all right. Well, you know me. I'm a hustler, so yeah. I'ma sell them. And I sold the makeup. People mm -hmm. bought them, but they were asking me like, how do I use this? And I didn't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went to makeup school to learn how to do the makeup. Opened a makeup store, and um, business just bloom the from there the but I know that what you focus on grows mm -hmm. like I'm living Correct. proof of that so um you know business grew I got robbed so my store got robbed twice they okay. took all my inventory register in everything. Jamaica in Jamaica okay I had two reasons to give up wow okay and I'm like nope I'm not giving up so I was dating a guy he gave me a fresh start again got me a new place got me new inventory and I'm like alright this is it and when I moved to that spot, girl, <laughs> it just went off. And then people started asking me for like different color lipsticks. And I'm like, ding, ding. I could start my own makeup line. Right. I could launch. At that time, um, Kara was hot. Okay. Right? So okay. she had the colored lipsticks at that time. Okay. Killing the game. Okay. Okay. Right. So I'm like, okay, I could do this in Jamaica. And I did took me a year to find a manufacturer and stuff like that and I launched girl <laughs> I was on TV on the radio in the newspapers everything right as a fugitive and I wow. was like so nervous like I was always walking and looking over my shoulders but I'm like I'm a risk taker right I know I gotta do what I gotta do to right. feed my child so right. um it went big and it was just a big thing. People from the States, all over the world was yeah. buying this lipstick. Wow. You know, they're wow. like, oh, this girl in Jamaica. Yeah. So I guess that was a unique situation. Mm -hmm. It was a dull one, but it's, it was also a bright one right. for me. Right. You know, and it built me as a person and mm -hmm. just let me know my capabilities. And right. I have no regrets. So, you know, did that, built my business and start a clothing line in the process that failed in six months I was like oh this is working out let me just lock this down mm -hmm. no patience mm -hmm. and after a little while though my son would like bother me mommy when are you gonna come on the plane with me mm -hmm. and I'm like oh. at some point because I had no plans of coming back to the states it was ever. a wrap <laughs> ever I was like I'm gonna live my best Jamaica life I'm not coming back to the states but when I realize everything that I accomplished, mm -hmm. I'm like, there's Jamaica is so small that it's like, what more can I do here? Right. I right. need to spread my wings. Like right. I need to fly. Yeah. And I just, I used to date a guy. He he had money and he took took good care of me. Mm -hmm. And after we broke up, I feel like we broke up for a reason, or I would still be comfortable sitting, okay. you know, being taken care of, even though I had my business. Right. 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 So we broke up, and I'm like, oh, let me just go handle my business. Mm -hmm. And I just made that decision. Yeah. It was the scariest thing ever. Right, because you had to leave your son behind. I had to leave my son. I had to yeah. leave a business that I built. Right.
Right. So I had to leave that, you know, leave people in charge. And it was just so scary. But the level of faith that I had developed while being on the run and building my business, it brought me through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. So let's fast forward to being this successful business owner. So you've built at least the multi six figure business. Mm hmm. Seven, well, seven, seven, seven figures. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Um, so I want to have these candid conversations with business owners that have built right. at least six, seven, however many figures, right. because a lot of people get on social media and they see like, oh, like I want to live that life. They see mm. the cars and the jewelry and the houses and, mm. you know, the trips and, you know, just all this stuff. And other people are getting on social media like, I want to live that life. Like, I want to do that. I want to have that, right? And so I get on social media and I'm like, You're, you don't know what sacrifices they, they made. You may not be willing to make those sacrifices. You don't know the money that they've invested, the time that they've invested. Come on now. You don't know if they selling pussy. You don't know if they washing dope money. Listen. You know what I mean? So It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so people just make it look good. And yes. so I want to be the voice to let people know no, this shit get rough. Uh, rough. <laughs> when I say rough, I mean like I went down a couple times though, Meek. Really? Yeah. I went flat a couple times. Yeah. But we But are, we don't that, that stuff is not but, talked about. And I'm because not Because we don't want to be judged. They judging you anyway. Ooh. They judging you anyway, right? right? And so my thing is the reason that I've always showed up and been transparent. And I don't tell everything, right? But I share a lot because I feel it's important for people to know. Right. Because when we get that 100,000 followers, that first $100,000, <laughs> we got balloons. <laughs> we doing photo shoots. We living it up. We popping True. bottles. We doing all so this stuff. So why not let them know? Exactly. And not I mean, everything. I feel like, I, I don't know. It's like, how do you come as a person that they see? Remember, they already put you in a box. And I'd be like, I'm, I'm human. <laughs> I'm human. I'm not a robot. Don't put me in no box they and I'm not They already put you in a box because the moment you say you made 100K, oh, you you get, I'm like, what? It's yeah. on, I'm like, it's only 100K, but to a lot of people, it's big money. It so, was big money to me. I remember no, only making but, forty thousand dollars a year. But how did you year. feel when you made multi hundred k's? I need more. Period. <laughs> I, I need more. So they already put you in a box. So how do you show up and be like, you know, guys, today I I'm just not feeling like you're gonna. Or today I'm just on flat. Or today I like, do. I show up and be like, y'all know what? I'm not feeling it. I don't feel good. Like I think I might be depressed. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I think I might, it, it's some things going on. Like, I don't know what it is. I trust God. I don't know what's going on, but I trust God. I talk about that stuff a lot. You know, Black Friday will have goals of 50K, 40K, whatever. And I show up like, hey, I didn't meet my goal. Right. No, like stuff like that. Yeah. But I've never really, people tell you that they went broke when they got more money. I, I believe that. Right. I believe that. And I, well, so we're not talking about like going broke necessarily. Just it's just about more the lower, so of like, I be stressed out. Do I, do I sell crack? Do I smoke crack? <laughs> like, do I cut my hair off? Do I pull it out? Like, what do I do? I'm talking about that. The most of the people make the social media. It's just beautiful. Everything is just beautiful. I don't Cause I don't do that, girl. I be showing. I be showing them my negative. That's why you sitting here with me, right? Period. Now. I be showing them. We have negative days. Ain't no right. all peaches and cream exactly. over here. Exactly. There's days when you have to figure out so much. It's like, what do I do? And then you're so used to being an entrepreneur. Like for me, I have three felonies. So where do I turn? Right. Where I mean, I, I don't have no felonies, but I ain't going to a nine to five. <laughs> I ain't never been to jail, but I ain't going to a nine to five, right? right? You gotta stay down for your come up. And I think that's the issue with a lot of people is, again, like I said, the sacrifices. Some people aren't willing to make the sacrifices. People don't wanna invest time. They don't wanna invest, invest money. Invest nothing. Right? They just wanna come up. Like how y'all wanna come up with no sacrifice? Right, but it's like 
the relationship that's been dead since day two. They stick that out for 15 oh, years. Oh, girl, let's not even talk about that. All right, let's not talk about that. <laughs> but anyway, so like when you're feeling down or low or flat or whatever, like who do you turn to? What do you do? Like, I really have nobody to turn to. It's very sad. Um, so I have my younger sister, mm -hmm. right? Brie. She's younger than me, Bree. Big mm -hmm. shout outs to Bree. Um, and I'll talk her ear off. Okay. And she'd be like, sister, it's going to be okay. I'm getting all emotional right now because she really be like, girl, you yeah. overcame so much. It's right. going to be fine. Right. And that's really the only person that I have to tell me that it's going to be fine. Because mm -hmm. I don't really open up to a lot. Right. Right. So. Because it'd be hard. You don't know who's who and what's what. It's and the judge, you know, it's like, oh. People just feel like you can't go down. The like, thing about it, though, is like the people that you would probably want to turn to or talk to, you don't know what they're experiencing because they're not going to share it. That part. Right? That part. So, and for me, I've experienced that, you know, being around a lot of big ballers, mm -hmm. I know that we all go through something. Cause I the ballers the that like stand in front of the private jets that don't take off or... No, the oh, okay. people who really make money, okay. you know, okay. and <laughs> you know, I gotta cut up. People a little fly bit. on the on okay, the jet. they fly. <laughs> okay, okay, right, okay, and okay. they will open up and be like, "Yo, I'm not in the mood today. Like right. today, I just don't know." Right. And it's and they got money, so right. if they got money, money, and they feel like that because money, you know, of course we need money to survive. However, mean. money is not the you know, but people on social media think that having all this money is going to make you happy. Right, but their mental health is... And jacked. that's why I fight for, like, I get up and I pray and I just ask God to lead me and I don't ask Him for much and just thank Him for my journey. And Even the bad days. The, all the, the bad days. Moments, like, yeah. I take a walk. I try to feed my, you know, body healthy because it has a lot to do with your mental. Like, Correct. Controlling your mental mental strength when yes. it comes to being an entrepreneur is something like really serious And yeah. I feel like people do not take that serious. They don't. And that's why a lot of people fail. Yeah Yeah, it, it's it's the mental health. It's the mindset for sure um, So yeah, so like I said, I just wanted you to just share a little bit of like what you do So you walk you call Brie talk her <laughs> ear off Talk and her ear off um I still post on social media like mm -hmm. I still get up to my devotional posts and stuff like that but I really have I am the person mm -hmm. I'm the person who everyone looks to mm -hmm. for advice mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. like everything right but I have nobody to look to and it's very lonely yeah it's lonely because I'm single right now mm -hmm. and I'm used to having a person to look mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So me being single for like 19 months now, it's like, it's a weird space for me all over again. Mm -hmm. I've never been single for this long. Okay. I've always had a guy that I could say, you know, it's not happening today or maybe he'll take me on a trip or maybe he'll be able to, to fill that whatever I'm Void missing. Whatever. But I'm... you single. So let me just skip past a couple of these questions because a question I have like how is it um even like entertaining or inter or interacting with guys being that you a boss you didn't got two houses built you you doing your shit like how is <laughs> it, it sucks and I hate it yeah so do you feel that guys are threatened by um I don't know if they're threatened I just know that some there's some blockage it's like I'm not going to be able to control her, so, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, and the conversations with me sometimes go nowhere, because when they talk about something, I'm like, right, no. This yeah, not, this ain't, this like, ain't, this ain't it. it. Yeah. yeah. But then you have some of them who will, they are, they love what you do. Mm -hmm. They love the idea. They love the idea of me, but they can't now. handle me. Correct. Correct. So they still, you know, will have a conversation. I'm, I'm a nice person. So if mm -hmm. you say hi, I'm going to say hi. Correct. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to stay right there. Yeah. Because I already see that you can't handle this. Yeah. You know, I'm a lot. Yeah. And I fried chicken <laughs> once. <laughs> what? Yeah, I ain't got to double back on my fried chicken. I do it once and it's done. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, but it's, it's hard. Yeah. And I realized that ever since I got my, I'm like, 
people just talk about the house and I'm like, when you buy a house, you that's a lot of money that you gotta spend. Right. So why do people think that you're rich when you buy a house? Because it's bigger than what they've imagined, right? Is is I mean buying a house is a big deal. Like when it I said big, I didn't say it wasn't. Right. But, but yeah, people you think know you just me. got the it. The maintenance. Oh yeah. The the All furnishing the house. Yes. The yes. other stuff that like people feel like, oh my gosh, she's so rich because she got a house. Yeah. No, she's really rich because she got two houses. Right. And I'm like, bro. Right. This is big investment. Yeah. But I'm, don't discredit. Don't down. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not. Okay. I never okay. will because guess what? I never dreamed. Correct. Same. Of having a house. Right. Yeah. Built. Two houses. Built. Built. Right. All right. So I will never ever come where I'm coming from. I right. grew up where I had to use the toilet outside. Right. You see me post where I came from. Right. Like, right. I had to go outside. There was no toilet inside. I had yeah. to sleep on a bed with my mom and my sister. Right. Like I grew up rough. Yeah. yeah. So this is a big deal for me. And that's why I kind of do not really let any and anyone in my space. I right. got to protect it. You most definitely. You got it set boundaries you got yes. to definitely make sure that your space is definitely. is your space but um okay so yeah i i totally get that so um how has your transition been to houston Whew, i'm still transitioning yeah i'm still not settled in yet okay. it's so weird but i'm comfortable i'm at peace yeah. It's just now for me, and let me just be transparent about this. Um, I do a lot of businesses, but I'm sure entrepreneurs out there focus on one thing, right? You know what it is to focus on that one thing. So mm -hmm. I've had two experiences where I focused on one thing and it bloomed so much. Now I'm like everywhere doing everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm just fighting to find the thing. The thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like when I find the thing, um, I'll be good. But for right now, I'm like in between everything, and it sucks. Also, yeah, I hate it. yeah, I I get it. I get it. I'm I'm transitioning. I'm you know between things, doing things, and yeah, I, I trust me. I'm with you. trying to figure it out. I'm with you. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. Oh, I'm gonna figure it you out. Know. So <laughs> I get that. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask you about is like, you know, let me see. I'm going to word this. <laughs> the, the Airbnb industry. Ooh, child. Oof. All right. So Airbnb. Now people make Airbnb looks like, oh my God, as soon as you get a unit, you're rich. Why not do it? Why? Just why? Don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, it's possible, mm -hmm. but there's going to be weeks where you don't get a booking. Mm -hmm. You have to like really know how to play with the system mm -hmm. to really get booked. You're gonna have to drop your prices per night at time. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to change the wording on your listing. You're gonna have to change your pictures. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna have to do so much to get booked. And people don't speak about that. It's like, oh just get a unit and it'll be booked out for every right. day. Right. No. And the, the, the you the good thing about your unit is you own it. Right. Right. Definitely. A lot of people are telling people about how to do corporate leases and do this and do that. So um So I you know what, I got that unit and it, it wasn't even it it's basically for my son. Like mm -hmm. I really bought mm -hmm. that for him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when he gets older you could at least say, you know what? When mommy made some money money, she bought me a house. Right. Period. So right. I bought that for that and I'm like how can I make it pay for itself? Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. let me just do Airbnb so that could pay for itself and I ain't got to worry about that bill. Right. Um, and I started the Airbnb. When did I start in April? And it's been... Okay. She rough right now. Money's rough. slow rough. right now. Money is not flowing. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but money is not flowing right now. It yeah. really isn't. Um, I also, let me just say this, me, because I see people bashing on the internet talking about um, pandemic rich people and mm, okay okay if you made some money in the pandemic and mm -hmm. you made use of the money that you made mm -hmm. kudos right i made the most money i made the most the money pandemic. i made the I most money hope. i've ne ever made in my life combined together and the four people are years. downing it like i don't but know I, if you see it but, but i, I, I think it. I don't know. I could be mistaken, but I think they're downing the people that got like the PPP money that wasn't eligible and stuff like that. I think that's what I've seen. 
like oh the money is gone and all that i've mm -hmm. seen them but i don't know you I know mean, who knows it, it, back to what i said not too long ago people gonna judge you regardless they're gonna always have something to say and so. that's why i set my social boundaries i'm sorry yeah there's boundaries that i set when it comes to social media people be like oh all your business no all my business is not there period and all that's what i tell people all the time y'all think y'all know everything no. about me Y'all, y'all know. Y'all know, know you to know. what I want you to know. Exactly. Period. That's exactly. It. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, what message? What what message do you have to send to anybody that is looking to be an entrepreneur um, right now or in the future? Because things gonna get better. Oh, definitely. Things gonna get um, better. I say go for it. You know, there's. I don't think anything is impossible mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And being an entrepreneur you have to know your seasons i spoke about this the other day you have your you're gonna have your low seasons mm -hmm. you're gonna have your high seasons mm -hmm. you just have to know how to balance your money and make it work in all seasons um and you gotta be consistent and show up every single consistent. day like you cannot show up this week and not show up next. no you have to show up every single day so that people know what you're selling what right. you're offering whatever it is and it's going to work. Right. I feel like, I don't know, I'm about, to, I'm about to get on my feet in Houston. Right. I'm about to go put some flyers on some cars. Right. Like, I'm about to be outside. Right. Seriously, right. me. Yeah. I'm not even joking. No, I mean, and that's what you have to do when social media is no longer working. For one, a lot of us have gotten spoiled with Instagram. Oh, I've gotten spoiled. Right? <laughs> with Instagram. And so that's why I've been talking to people recently like, hey, get on these other platforms. There's a lot of other platforms besides Instagram. Instagram dry right now, right? So if you got to get in the streets and go put flyers on cars or in the but gas a lot pumps, of people don't want to do that. They don't want to do nothing. They want to wake up rich. No. They don't want to do nothing. I'm about to go in the streets. I just got me some flyer because I love makeup. Like mm -hmm. I feel like that's my first love. That's my baby that put me out there and make a lot of people know who I am. So I feel like I'm in my happy space when I do it and I say Houston will do well with me. Yes being a makeup artist yes because so, they don't in houston they put up makeup oh they don't play degrees. oh they don't play so i'm like i'm ready to get back in the field and it's not just gonna be makeup it's gonna be an experience you could get an outfit you could get your makeup done so it's gonna be a whole look so i'm gonna treat it as if it's an experience it's not gonna be oh just let me get your face done right you know what i'm saying so right. um I, I got some flyers okay I'm, yeah i'm on my crap okay and my sister Bree, she about to go with me, and we about to hit the streets yeah. with them flyers. Yeah, that's what's so right. let people know what's good. Drop them in some salons. Like, get to work. I'ma get to it how I know it because right. this is how I hustle. Right, right. It's not just oh sitting on Instagram. No, we we touching the streets. You gotta get back out there. That's like uh, most people. Not my, well. The people that's been on my Instagram for years, like they seen me driving around San Francisco with bundles of hair Period. on my passenger seat to, you know, doing all the things that I that I've been doing. But um, I sold out my car trunk. Like, you yeah. don't know about those hustles. I used to right. sell sex toys on my car trunk. Yeah. Take them to the, the strip clubs. Yeah. Sell them to the strippers. Like, that's the hustle I know. And that's the hustle I love. I right. love hard work. I don't right. really not, like nothing coming too easy to me. Right. right. And I always got to be in work mode. When I'm sitting down, I'm like, bro, I cannot sit down. Yeah. I don't know how people sit. I always yeah. got to be on go doing yeah. something. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. I'm excited about this podcast. I'm excited about this podcast. Yeah. Because you are going to shed a lot of light on, you know, how people look at entrepreneurs. Yeah. And in a lot of different industries.